Sari Tor is here. You're once again stuck in the existential crisis corner. So this video is about juggling being an author and a parent. It is possible. Uh, so my, my situation is I'm married with a kid and I have a full-time job. I'm the breadwinner. So, uh, and I was able to finish writing a novel and work on self-publishing it and sort of have a life outside that sometimes. So uh, these are some tips I have for you. Um, I hope they work for you too. Number one, mommy or daddy's special writing time. If you're like me, you probably find it very hard to write when there's other little noises going around. So if you have a significant other, it might be beneficial to have them give you a specific amount of time that you can use to write. For me, my wife usually gives me about an hour or two on every weekday and a couple extra hours on the weekend. Uh, that's my mommy special writing time. And, and maybe maybe get a relative, babysit or whatever. Um, even if it's just for a half hour a day, it makes a huge difference. You can just unload all these things from your brain and make most of this time. Schedule this time to be for writing. Don't schedule it and then if your friend says, hey, can you go out at this time on this day? And you know, you'd be like, that's my writing time, damn it. It's on the calendar. Make the most out of this time because you're likely not gonna get a lot of it. Turn off that social media, damn it. Get writing. That leads me to number two. If you have the time and the energy, go write someplace else. Um, so even if I am having my special writing time, and I'm away in the bedroom writing and my wife will forget something in the room and she'll come in just to get something real quick and then in comes marching my little three-year-old goes mommy and jumps on my lap and boom the whole writing time's over it's not really anyone's fault um I love you dear uh but it's uh it's just those things are kind of always inevitable when you're in the same building as your child bless their hearts so if you're able to get away somewhere even if you're just walking to the end of a street and sitting on a rock maybe try to get some writing time outside of the house okay number three if you aren't able to get that alone time and you have that little kid in the room with you provide adequate distraction put on an educational tv program get some of their toys out um, one thing I like to do is if I'm physically writing in my notebook, I'll have Juliet, my, my three-year-old, I'll get her crayons and coloring stuff out. So if she sees me writing and she's coloring, she feels like she's kind of doing that with me. So it's like the illusion that we're doing this together when really I'm, I'm drawing letters and she's drawing, you know, scribbles on, on Goofy. Uh, now, number four, this kind of ties these three things together, is uh, prioritize the parts of your writing that have to be done when you're alone. And then when you do get the time, do those things. Just those things. Now, this could be different for everyone. Obviously, there's a lot of different little tasks when you're a writer, especially self-publisher, that aren't just writing. So things like updating my author social media, uh, communicating with other authors, communicating with critique partners or beta readers, editing vlogs, those things I can usually do with her in the room. I don't need that 100% quiet time. But the real, you know, fingers to the keyboard, really intense actual writing, that I've got to do by myself. Um, filming these vlogs, uh, self-editing, uh, editing and looking over critique partners work. These are all things I gotta do by myself. So I prioritize those things to the bone when I get that alone time. I'm not doing any of those other things. Number five, if you think of something, for God's sake, write it down. Um, now obviously this is true for all authors, but especially especially for parents. Sometimes I'm not sure when I'm going to get the time to really be able to sit down and write, especially if it's a busy week, if my wife's sick, if I'm sick, if, you know, it's it's that month where there's 50 birthdays in the month. I might not get that special writing time for a while, so I write that shit down. I got a little notebook in my purse. It cost me 50 cents. 
I'll write things down whenever I need to because I might not get that time. You don't want those great ideas to slip away because especially if you're a busy parent, it's hard to remember stuff sometimes. My memory sucks now. And lastly, remember to spend some uninterrupted time with your kids. Um, you'll get the time to write your great novel, but your kids are only kids once. Uh, not to mention, if you take out all the emotional parts of this tip, um, when your kids are in the room with you and you have to write, um, it's more likely that they'll leave you alone if they aren't like clamoring for your attention because they haven't seen you in 50 days. They'll, more, they'll be more likely to give you a space if they're not begging for your attention. And also, thank your wife or husband or significant other for helping you out with all this. And if you ever decide to make your own author YouTube channel, maybe give them a shout out. Thank you, dear. Okay, so uh, that's my video on some tips to juggle being a writer and a parent. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please let me know by liking the video or even subscribing to the Existential Crisis Corner. Uh, the first 50 pages of my novel Bubblegum can be read on my website, www.sarytorres.com. Please check that out. So uh, thank you very much for your time. This has been the Existential Crisis Corner, and I am Sari Torres. Stay weird.